Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. If you are here for the first time, let me introduce myself. My name is James David and I'd like to talk about my tropical plants and how I care and cultivate them in my garden. Today, I would like to talk about my Colocasia and Alocasia collection, commonly known as elephant ear plants. Just a cautionary note, some of them are known as taro, which are grown as food, but others similarly looking, especially the alocasia species, are considered poisonous. I would strongly recommend to do proper risk if you are considering to grow them as edibles, as here I grow them just for ornamental purposes only. There are so many types and variations of elephant ear plants, I, and uh, I have managed to collect some but however these are the ones that I really love and these are the ones that I'm actually cultivating. This particular one is actually Thai Giant. This particular type actually has a very huge leaf and uh, they are quite thin and uh, fragile actually and uh, they have this very light green notes which actually goes very well in contrast with other of my colocasia uh, plants and uh, one of the things that i want to make mention to you here is that uh, they can actually grow very huge based on the size of the pot that they actually planted so if you want to control their size do grow them and cultivate them in a, a, a regular size pot if you were to want to want them to grow in a huge kind of, uh, size then open either get a bigger pot or a huge uh, or plant them in on an open open area this one they i actually kept this indoors and what has happened here is that i had a had terrible uh, spider mite attack on them and what i've done is i trim off all the leaves and actually planted outside and i see them they are doing quite well and without any infection so one of the things that i notice here is that uh, if the plant is suffering and that it could be the sign that it is not receiving enough light they tend to give out signal and what happened here is that the pest and all these predators start to come and attack them so one of the ways we can actually understand and figure out is that whether the plant is receiving enough light the other thing here that i actually do here is that once in a while once in a month i actually mix uh, neem oil with soap and spray on them just to to have a control from pest from them sometimes mealybug outfits and spider mite just love to uh, attack them and they can actually be very detrimental to the plant this particular one needs to be in the water so what i have what i've done here is that i have actually placed a container underneath the pot so that there will be a uh, water retention at the same time i don't want to fully put it into the water i don't want to have a mosquito problem so this is one of the ways that i actually do it by placing a container underneath it this is another uh, black stem alocasia this is a smaller one which i managed to grow and this is a little bit sensitive they tend to uh, die back and come back i actually also managed to find this one alocasia cululata uh, and uh, it seems to doing fine here I have another one inside and also it's doing fine so sometimes it is just that you have to try and error and figure out whether they do well indoors or outdoor I just want to mention to you that most of them I actually collected them on around the swamp area and the drain site even especially this so I just want to say that some of them you don't normally find them are solely nurseries so it'll be good that if you are staying uh, in a place where this plant grow as a native plant and you can actually cultivate them to have them in, in your collection and their care is very much similar like the plants that grows along the swamp area where they require a very good lots of light and a lot of water because if they are too dry the leaves tend to dry and they will can wither away so these are the plants that is they do very well in uh, beside the pond area or a uh, water feature area this one uh, teacup also sometimes uh, 
alternatively known as coffee cup i think is based on the size of the leaf normally what happens is there will be actually a water in the center and you collect it and you sort of like pour off when the water comes full especially during the rain season what is happening here is that uh, there has been no rain for a few weeks and so most of the leaves are actually struggling a lot as i have to really uh, water them a lot just to make sure that they don't uh, suffer dehydration this particular one black reaper it's considered one of the most popular plants which is uh, highly sought after I often receive a lot of questions on the difference between black coral and black ripple and one of the most most important features about ripple is that you will see that there, there will be a lot of dentures and corrugation on the leaf sort of like there's a kind of a, a wrinkles on the leaf whereas coral do not have such sadly my black coral died in my hands and so I just cultivating the black ripple and just keeping it as such this particular one my black ripple actually if you look at it is quite spent and burnt out uh, and uh, the other thing which i just realized and noticed here is that it is actually having a very strong uh, bad uh, spider mite infection on the leaves and the strangest thing about spider mites is that they only attack the leaf uh, the weak plants so do give them a good dosage of fertilizer so that they can actually handle the stress the other thing that i want to show to you here is about black magic if you look at it the colors are not so evident is because i have not placed any fertilizer and given them any any good uh, fertilizer for quite a quite a time and so the colors are very much green if if it's not so it will be actually a very deep black grayish black so fertilizer actually uh, plays a very strong role on them because they are very thirsty and hungry plant uh, if you look at it i actually place them in buckets so that the, there will always be water retention in it uh, and at the same time i have actually filled it up with soil so that i don't have mosquito problems in my place these particular plants are actually tuberous and so what happened here is in some places they do tend to disappear and go dormant but the thing here is that they do come back after a season depending on the circumstances so if they are, if they are receiving good food fertilizer and good lighting and good amount of water they do tend to stay in longer terms and any time if there is a stress and they will actually switch to dormancy and it will take about few months for them to jump start and come back in some cases they don't come back so do watch out for it that the, 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 the tuber and or either the yam kind of thing underneath the soil do not rot away because at times they, that can happen and you can actually lose the whole plant anyway this i'm coming to a conclusion so thank you so much for visiting if you have any questions or query do comment below and i'll try my best to answer and if you can please do click like and subscribe to my channel thank you very much and have a nice day bye